Ladies and gentlemen, let's kick start the day with a fireside chat for which the topic is the new frontier for mobile app. Before I invite the speakers for the session, may I please invite Mr. Amit Yadav, Country Manager, South Asia, Pubmatic, as the session chair. Followed by the speakers, Ms. Tanushri Radhakrishnan, Head Biddable, Group M, and Atisham Ali, Vice President, Monetization, Operations, and Programmatic Business, NDTV. Hi, Atisham. Hi, Tanushri, and thank you, Pallavi. Uh, all right um i think we're done with the introduction so that's a, a good bit let's just quickly jump into it um uh, so uh, we heard dr batra talking about uh, the way mobile has uh, penetrated in our lives um i mean uh, the situation at this point of time is like for the past four or five years, we've seen like multifold growth on uh, mobile. You think of a use case uh, and maybe that is probably solvable in one way or the other by a mobile app. So uh, the usage uh, has grown significantly, uh, which basically means there are lots and lots of users uh, on the mobile ecosystem. Uh, but then again, uh, it also poses a lot of challenge in the sense that how do we basically cater to these uh, user or this audience in the most effective, in the most uh, efficient manner, and also ensure that the right messaging is delivered in the right context and possibly drive some uh, you know, call to action. So with that uh, context uh, set, I would probably, um, you know, uh, get on my with first question, and uh, uh, that's to you, Tanushree. So, uh, what do you think the value of programmatic is for a uh, mobile app ecosystem as such? Sure. So, um, I think, you know, like, I mean, there's no point in terms of really talking about the value of mobile per se. So, like Mr. Batra mentioned right now, right? I mean, we are screenagers. Uh, we live in the times of mobile. And I think we have seen that really significantly pick up post-pandemic. Uh, I think what no CDO, no CTO could do, COVID has done for us. So, while the surge has been humongous, I think, uh, see, uh, what happens on the mobile, on the programmatic app pieces, you know, like, uh, app-based programmatic was traditionally followed by the waterfall model of buying, right? And uh, in which, you know, developers would typically request for bid sequentially from a hierarchy of networks. Now, the problem with this model was that it lacks transparency and often, you know, res would result in lower price uh, for publishers than what could uh, potentially be available in a real-time auction. Uh, while in web environments, you know, we kind of managed to have unified auctions and, you know, have the header biddings in place. But apps, unfortunately, you know, like, I mean, we still do not have that level of, uh, I would say, you know, technical advancement out there. So while uh, we are using variety of terms and process, you know, including uh, bidding and app bidding and stuff, I think there's still a long way for us to go out there. So while it is, uh, it has faded in importance on the web front, I think on the mobile, because of the technological challenges that exist, you know, whether it's around reconciling SDKs and stuff, I think till the time we are not able to attribute each one of them individually, I think till such time, I think we'll have to continue looking at it. And interestingly, you know, like I stumbled upon this report, I think, which was with Pubmatic itself, uh, which spoke about how header bidding has increased significantly in the mobile front. So while we are seeing a growth one year, uh, I think it would be very interesting to watch out for that. But uh, and until such time, yes, value for programmatic on mobile app definitely exists. You know, there's no, there are no two ways about it. Perfect. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, shoot the same question to uh, Atisham as well. Atisham, what do you think that programmatic, how uh, it drives value for your mobile app business? Uh, so, uh, just to start with, like how the industry is moving. If I say app as a product, yes, we have, we are growing. Obviously, the spends are coming. And all like mostly you see spend, uh, like spends are going towards like fintech, ad tech, all those places. So <clears throat> the biggest challenge, like being a publisher, what we face is obviously the cycle to make any techni technology changes. It takes a lot. So obviously, so that is something publisher all, always struggle with. And obviously, like being a news publisher, yes, there are spends coming, there are buys happening on mobile. mobile apps and stuff but we haven't seen that kind of a upliftment in terms of programmatic or per se 
on a news genre per se because obviously advertisers and buyers are little uh, cautious about what content they are present on that is a biggest thing which has started coming up that obviously they wanted to be they don't want to be associated with any bad content like which, which is a negative in news even like most of the advertisers now started treating covid news also as as a like a negative news so obviously that is also a biggest challenge what we've been like being a news publisher we've been having but yes we do seeing growth but obviously the growth isn't that great so obviously we still trying to figure out like what where exactly to invest on where exactly what technology to be used on but yes header bidding yes we we are working on header bidding but we are working with pomatic only on the header bidding stuff so we have seen a uh, initial good results so let's hope like uh, this will uh, will be on from there good uh, you you adishan you talked about challenges which is uh, you know news uh, probably not being the preferred media um, especially the negative news not being the preferred uh, uh, what do you say a uh, context where advertisers would like to run their ads um, tanushi my question is actually to you uh, how do you think that this is a blocker so uh, where i'm coming from is um, there are users there are people who is consuming uh, the content uh, but like atisham said that uh, that that idea or that connotation of associating with negative news is, is still very strong in the advertiser's mind uh, and that probably also stops from advertising on the overall uh, you know website itself or the app itself do you think that there are there are ways to probably filter out or to probably um you know or maybe at your end you are probably doing something which is basically uh, uh carving out like in good quality inventory uh, to basically uh, serve to uh, that kind of audience certainly right see I mean as an advertiser it's it's quite evident right i mean they would be worried about uh, the quality of the content on which an ad is being played uh, but i think uh, the fact remains that how do you really instill that confidence amongst them in terms of you know what can be done so uh, the simple problem you know like i mean logic that we apply is as long as we have sufficient hygiene as far as you know brand safety is concerned you know like viewability ad fraud and stuff i think uh, if we are implementing those third party measurements and locking partners in place then it's not not really a problem right so the key i would say is to have a mix of contextual and measurement partners which can supplement the dsps with specific options you know and that's what will actually give us the right uh, i would say the right ad at the right point in time and it is also you know beneficial for the uh, client because you are eventually reaping better roi so i think it's uh, it's not really so much of a concern yes we have to be careful and cautious about where we are doing it and how we are doing it uh, but that does not really adher people from Uh, using programmatic is how I see it. Perfect. Uh, but just a question related to uh, like the same set of um, same stream. Um, what formats do you think are uh, basically uh, preferred mostly these days by the advertisers? So, whether it's video, is it display, is it native? Um, so uh see i mean especially post covid again you know like i mean as people hunkered down at home during the pandemic and uh, they spent a lot of time watching uh, digital video i think we definitely see a growth on that front and uh, it's way more than what we had anticipated initially uh, so uh, yes there is a huge surge in video uh what we've also interestingly seen is you know a surge in contextual in app advertising uh, which has started picking up uh see because you know as this whole uh, era where we would not really be able to look into uh, third party tracking or cookies and all it's in a cookieless world i think the first party data point becomes way more important and uh, you know so uh, surprisingly though i would say you know native has not really picked up scale in india yet uh, so that's one piece uh, where you know like definitely we would want to see more interesting stuff and content come to play uh, but yeah video is a, a definite plus plus uh, we have seen uh, growth across and i think uh, uh, it is across all formats like 6 seconds 10 seconds long form content uh, because i think there's no better way to communicate and engage your audience than video uh, so that that's that's there definitely you you said surprisingly native uh, do you expect like you have like demand for native and there is no supply as such or the advertisers are not willing for native 
Uh, see, it would be a mix of both, right? So, uh, because when you look at the way the market is evolving, and we're talking about personalization at scale, or you know, like having a content a skin, context a screen, all those terminologies are fine, right? But the fact remains that how do you really get the right kind of uh, inventory, the right kind of format which will engage your audience? I think what comes to my mind is, you know, like I mean, um, I don't remember the name of the brand, uh, but KFC had done a very interesting uh, in-game. Uh, you know, content uh, sinkage with uh, one of these uh, gaming apps where, you know, like, I mean, I think it was to do with some hunting of ghosts and stuff. And, you know, like you could actually find out those specific ghosts in the KFC outlets. Uh, I think that's a brilliant way to engage a consumer, right? I mean, you are in a gaming app, but you're not taking it away from them. Uh, you are enhancing that experience for them. So as long as the content enhances the consumer experience, I think it's a brilliant place to be in. Nice. Atisham, do you think that native is something that your advertisers or agencies are asking for? Do you yes. think native would probably so be I also uh, the next big thing? I agree with Anushri on that. We haven't seen native much, but obviously one thing which we have really seen as picked up is obviously the demand for the video, especially for the app thing, because now a lot of advertisers what started obviously mapping users' bases, what handset device they are on. So obviously if you are actually have an iOS app and obviously you know like any iPhone is like is like more than 30,000. So obviously if you wanted to actually target that kind of an audience who have like a like a that kind of a spend so obviously they can easily target to iOS app and they can can get the so that's one thing what we have seen like obviously on the video part like the spend has increased a lot. But yes native we haven't seen it. it's it's pretty much same what it was earlier like Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Tanushri, you mentioned about uh, you know uh, going away of cookies. Um, I think uh, that's a good point of discussion. We've seen that regulation or self-regulation coming in the in-app environment also, and we have seen that Apple, um, uh, you know, um, going for an opt-in version of passing device IDs. Uh, do you think? Well, well, I think that in-app as an app, Apple is is uh, still not a scalable solution in India, but if Google follows the same path, which means Google also makes it opt-in, do you think that will affect the way you target uh, users? Uh, do you think that's going to affect your uh, overall performance business, so to say? Uh, yes, definitely, right? So in fact, uh, in fact, we were, I would say, honestly, so happy about the fact that, you know, they're rolled it back for about two years because then at least that helps us uh, you know have a head start uh, on it so while we've already started working on you know first party data and uh, you know like methods so that we can actually you know like capture that entire piece right and uh, see there are no two ways about it you know like uh, because uh, uh, respecting the sentiments of users and you know like in choice based marketing as we're calling it i mean that is the way to go uh, we definitely see google or you know like i mean taking that stance but uh, you know, uh, what I would say is when the duopoly kind of moves into such a place, you know, the markets will kind of cope. Uh, we will figure out ways in terms of, you know, uh, ways around it uh, to uh, deliver on it. And, uh, you know, I mean, it would be very similar to, you know, what we're working around on the whole cookie uh, deprecation front. So uh, there are ways in which we are working, you know, let's say uh, with Google, when we talk about the flock. Uh, based method, uh, you know, mechanisms. So there will be instances and there will be technology which will be utilized in terms of, you know, having a way around it. Uh, so I see because tracking and cookies are not the only way targeting gets done. So there's a lot more to it. So yes, of course, you know, we would be able to work around it and uh, come up with more interesting alternatives of uh, device level of targeting. But yes, at the start, uh, it will definitely pinch. We would see that drop happening. Uh, in terms of performance. But I think, you know, like, I mean, as we evolve, uh, we would see those numbers also scaling back up. Um, all right. I think, um, uh, you know, uh, I probably have, uh, uh, you know, uh, got some of the critical answers for myself. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably wrap up with, with like um, one question each for you, uh, both of you. Like, what are the big, biggest, uh, you know, couple of challenges that you see pertaining to growth of in-app uh, business? And I'll, I'll probably ask this question first to Atisham and then to Tanushi. What do you think is like the biggest challenges or at least two challenges that you see uh, that will probably 
be a blocker to your in app business growth i think uh, the biggest thing what uh, for an in app business and even from the buyer side and from the publisher is to build a good data points for an advertiser to come and actually buy so that is the biggest challenge in coming in because uh, in app obviously there are limitation in terms of how you actually pass on the data and stuff and that is something we need to work and plus there are like obviously google of the world and uh, apple of the world are like we are dependent on and stuff so that is also one thing and another important thing uh, when it comes about data or like for example right now we talk about first party cookie third party on a browser still easier for a user to actually manage that part but on an app there are uh, user they are not that uh, educated that how exactly you do opt in and opt out even if they if they does that user are not that uh, educated like how exactly so those are the challenges will will be like a biggest problem like irrespective of how much amount you spend like on that technology piece and stuff but obviously those challenges would always be there right do you think infra will also be one of the bigger challenges i i i keep thinking that the more users the more people come on the app the more infra that you probably have to invest to uh, basically you know and then you probably obviously need more revenue to uh, you know manage that infra cross so I don't see, those, my see, those are things are still manageable. Those are things, obviously, if you see that there are demand coming and there are money flowing in office, those are not the biggest uh, point. But the point is like right now, first to get a right technology, like whether are yeah. we going in the right direction? Because obviously, even if you put money or two, it obviously if you're not able to capitalize or utilize that, so obviously then it will be a challenge. So the biggest question here is like, are we going the right way or are we using the right technology? That is the biggest question. Of course. What do you think, Tanushree? I completely uh, second what Atishan was saying, right? I mean, because uh, uh, in light of the current situation, right, when we are seeing, seeing the application of third-party cookies and uh, other identifiers, I think uh, it becomes uh, imperative that you know apps themselves have a, a, a very robust mechanism of you know getting the content uh, ready because it's, it's definitely not easy to crawl the content on apps. Uh, so you know, while I would say a lot of uh, a lot of these large publishers have started you know creating their cohorts on demo interest uh, age and everything. But I think you know the the real uh, the fun in the game will only start you know when we actually start overlaying all these apps with these different identifiers you know whether it's location context because that's when the AI you know which which will uh, an AI driven model will actually start happening to work right because otherwise we are just going back to the uh, initial ways of working uh, so that's that's where it is and uh, you know another interesting point. Uh, Apple and the Google, uh, you know, uh, while Apple says, you know, it's an opt-in, Google is mostly an opt-out. And like uh, what uh, Atisha mentioned, you know, it's it's completely, you know, like how many of us do we even really go and see uh, whether it's an opt-out or not? So I think that's where the, the game will change. Yeah, yeah. I think very well said, um, uh, Tanishi. I think the most critical part is how do we build an ecosystem which is... Um, which is probably self-regulated um, and also, uh, you know, takes care of the privacy of the users and while giving them the right set of information about brands uh, and, and, you know, at the same time, good set of performance. Um, uh, thanks, thanks both of you. you know, good chatting with you. I hope the users also enjoy the discussion and have some good takeaways around in-app monetization. Um, th thanks both of you. Uh, thanks, Pallavi, and over to you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so all much. for being here. That was really enriching, and we really appreciate you making the time and being here this Friday. Thanks. Thank thanks you. Thanks.